welcome everybody to the third section of the chess tutorial in which we're finally going to be creating the online mechanic that goes behind the game. So in this episode, in this very first episode today, we're going to be creating a piece of menu. It doesn't have to do with anything online, but it's something that will be much required for the next step in which we're going to be hooking up our client and our server and starting them and also stopping them if we need to. So the piece of UI we're going to be creating is split in four different sections. Here will be the start menu, here will be the online menu, here is going to be when you host the game and you wait for somebody else to connect, and another one is going to be an empty screen in which this is where our game is going to be um, happening. This is done using the animator and also the mechanism, um, and it looks a little bit like this, right? So when we click on online, it goes here, you can decide to host the game, you can also connect to somebody else, you can uh, connect or go back. You can also decide to host, it's going to host on your local host at the moment. In this screen you wait for connection, you wait for an opponent, or you can also decide to cancel your hosting. This is going to shut down the server, go back over here, go back and play a local game for example. So uh, we do all of that setup today, so in the next episode we can start from a clean slate and actually start working on the client and server script. That being said, I'll see you in the episode. Cheers! We're going to start right away with the piece of UI. So we're going to start with something simple and then head into something a little bit more complicated. In our canvas here at the top, we only have the victory screen at the moment, but let's go ahead and create a new object that I'll call game UI, which will contain mostly menus, but maybe in the future it's going to contain um, other things such as a list of move on the screen and whose turn is it. Um, we're going to start right away by just putting a text mesh pro. So if you don't, if you haven't included that, just go ahead and do it. I'll put my text in black so I can see it, just because I have a white white background right now. Um, I'll just call this one chess. So that's going to be my title screen. And to give you an insight of what I'm trying to do, basically, is just uh, just chess, local game, and online game, right after the other. And I want to make sure I can see, so I'm going to enable Gizmo, so I can see exactly how it fits within the canvas. Now my game UI here at the top, I'll make sure it scales on both axes and I'll just put everything on zero so it takes the whole canvas size. Uh, did I actually assign a canvas scaler? Yes, we've done it. And within that, let's add a vertical layout group. And now for the values within it, I'm going to put a padding of 100 on the left side and also on the top side so I can have this, this right here and also maybe a spacing of roughly 25 in between every single elements. I'm going to make sure to disable the child force expand height and also enable the control size width. So only the two, those two width are going to be toggled. The reason I want to do that is so all my elements actually go all across the screen. Um, and uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. But I want them to keep their own um, height. So the next element in here is going to be an image. I'm just going to put an image like that, maybe 25 in width. Um, the color could be, I don't want to put it white because my background is white, so I'll put black. So change that, just as a separation type of deal. And then beneath that, I'm going to go ahead and create two more. I want to do buttons here. So I'll do two buttons, but we're going to be removing the graphic behind it. So on this button here, this is going to be the local game. And the other one's going to be the online game. Maybe I should have wait before I copy. I just want to make sure this one looks good. So I'll remove the graphic, I'm only keeping the text, and the text is going to be local game. Now I'm going to go ahead and play with the size of this that bit. First I want it anchor on the left side, of course, and maybe increase the size to something like 60 or... Yeah, let's see in the game screen how it looks like. So it looks something like this in the game screen. Maybe even a little bit bigger. or. Force bold, yeah, forcing bold is good. I'll copy this over and just here, this is going to be the online game. Again, the text needs to be changed and we also have to change the width so they're not that close apart. Uh, do remember they have a spacing of 25 in between as well. So the height I'm choosing right here is the height of the button. So the button is going to be all across and, um, well, this size. Maybe I want to make that a little bit bigger. 100 for example and I can also make sure my text is in the center yep so I like these settings I'm gonna keep those and my size is 100 oh, I forgot to write game 
There we go. Maybe increase the title size as well to something crazy. So something like that will do the job for the moment at least. All right, so once we have this piece of UI here, we're gonna go ahead and create a script that will control all of that, uh, that, that UI actually. So I'm gonna go ahead and on top of my canvas or on top of my game UI object, really doesn't matter. Um, I'm gonna be creating a new script called game UI. So let me just take it and drag it somewhere in my script folder. Now this script, the game UI, is going to behave as a singleton. And we could actually include the mono singleton um, script from the internet. So I'm going to go ahead and fetch that. Or you could just do a public static instance. You know what, since I don't want to make you do that, <laughs> let's go ahead and make a public static game UI instance instead. Um, yeah. And inside of a awake, we're going to have to assign that instance. So instance is equal to this and also um, here we do don't destroy on load, but we're never actually switching the scene. So with that in mind, I'm actually going to go back, make sure everything is here. So game UI is here. Perfect. All right, the awake is being called. But before we do, I'm just going to input to debug.log in those button and connect them. They're not required. I just want to make sure things work as um, when I go ahead and I test it a little bit later on. So to connect those. Find your script. For example, here is the game UI. It's on top of the canvas. Now I can go under my buttons, add the unclick event, drag my canvas in here, and find my game UI on local game button. Same thing for the, the uh, second one on online game. There we go. All right. So I will now try and create the second bot, which is to, oh, as you can see here, it popped. Um, the second part is the second piece of UI. So when we click on local game, technically we should jump in the game, that's totally fine. But if we click on online game, I am going to need another menu. And that other menu is going to be made right here. So new piece of UI. Um, do we have empty? Yeah, just create empty. That's going to be the online menu. And what I like to do is actually make sure this expands on both sides. Takes the exact same size as before. So for this one, for example. And then put a arbitrary amount on the left hand side over here. So for example, to be safe, let's do 2500. So minus 2500 in left and 2500 in right, 2.5k. And now this way, we have the we have a menu that has exactly the same size. And as you can see, if we have if we're on, on a free aspect, I can just change that and it's also going to change here as well. So it stays the exact same size, and that's what we're looking for here. Um, our game is going to be played in 16 per 9, so as you can see, it does make sense here as well. What I'm trying to achieve here is make my menu right there, and if something needs to be done in that menu, we're just going to play an animation that moves um, this menu here in the forefront. So let's go ahead and do that. What is going to be inside of that menu? Well, I'd like to have first I'll do the exact same thing, right? So I'll use a vertical layout group in here and I'll do certain padding. So uh, pretty much 100 everywhere. Why not? Spacing of 25. But this time I'd like to align things in the middle center instead of the top left. I am also going to remove every sort of expand uh, behavior. Inside of here, I'll be creating a button initially. That button is going to be the host button. So if you click on that, you're going to try and host the game. Um, that's a text, right? So let me change that here. The second element is maybe I want a separate thing. So I'm going to call this one a spacer and I'm going to remove what's inside of it. So it's just going to be an element that controls um, the space in between. Or just like we've done earlier, we could actually just have one image. Actually, yeah, make sure you remove the button too, but we could have one image that uh, spans across most of the screen. So maybe 1,000 1, here and maybe 10. So just a small line like that. Um, the next element is going to be, what could I do here? I could do an input field. That's where if I'm trying to connect to somebody else, that's going to be where I put the address. So the IP address. We're then going to do a connect button. 
So new button connect and finally another button for going back if we want to do a local game instead. So that's going to be the back button. Alright, so this is our piece of UI. Obviously it doesn't look that great. Um, as you can see this takes this part of the screen. Let's go ahead and play with the sizing of things a tad bit. Try and make this look good. I wish we had a different font right here. A different font would do us a lot of favor. Um, and if I have a button of that size, the rule is that you actually keep the same size. So I'm going to be hmm, copying this. So copy component and I'm going to be pasting it on the two other buttons. There we go. Oh, I actually kept the connect keyword here. I meant to write back. There we go. Fix. Okay. Um, also, might want to have the text in bold as well. And we're pretty much ready to go after that, I believe. When you do, um, by the way, when you do one of these uh, input field, also make sure you change the placeholder text. That's one of the most important important thing you have to do. The placeholder text is going to be a default address of localhost because that's most likely what we're going to be going for. And I'd like to change the font size to 32. Make sure you copy your settings. So copy component and you put it in the text that is unused. This way when you start writing the font size is the same and the alignment is also the same. Okay, so we have our second piece. Now do note that there is three more buttons, one for hosting, one for connect, one for back and also we'll need a reference to this one input field. So let's go back in our script and in our script we're going to need three more buttons. So public void on host, actually let's do on online because that's the online menu, host button. Our second one was on online connect button and finally the third on online back button. Now we could go ahead and just put that in there quickly. There we go. All right. Oh, one thing I'm starting to realize here as we do this is that, of course, this menu is in black. This one is in white. Um, I, as you can see, it, it kind of messed up over here. Um, we will be switching that around. But before I do so, I would like to create one final piece of UI. I know it's annoying, we have a lot of UI to do, but it's all part of what we'll need to make the flow work. So here we have a standard menu, here we have the online menu, and then we'll have to we'll need to do another menu in this case for this very specific game that has to do with waiting for an opponent. So if you decide to host, I'm gonna give you the option to well I'm not gonna give you the option. You're gonna have to wait for an opponent, but then I'm gonna give you an option to back and cancel your server as you do it. So on this online menu over here. I'm going to be copying this. Why am I copying this? Because I want to keep the position of it. Because this menu, I like to put it right here in, in diagonal of the initial one. So when I do my animation, I can go here and um, go left if I click on online, which my camera is going to be here. And if I host something, instead of going left again, it's going to go up. That's just the way I want my animation to work. So that's what I've done here. So I'll, I'll call this the host menu. Um, do I need to keep anything in there? Actually, I'm going to keep one button for the... Oh, I'm actually going to keep the back button. The back button is going to be the best one. Um, and let's also keep one piece of text. Oh, you know what? This messed up the size, so I'm just going to create it here. So, not a button. What have I done? Um, I'm going to be creating a text mesh pro. And that's going to be the waiting for opponent. I'll put that above because I'd like that to be above the text. And how do I write that in proper English? Waiting for connection could do the job. Let's make sure this one has a decent size. 
Then we can fix the alignment over here. And I'd like to put that in italic too. And maybe even lower, not lower, but put a little bit of alpha on it. There we go. This text will have to be black because we are on a, we are on a white background. And maybe I also want the button to, to feel like that as well. So the button should be black and the text within it could be white. Yeah, I'm gonna give this a try. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going, going to copy one button image, copy this component, go on all the other one, and then left, not left click. Yeah, left click, but with control. I can then paste it on all of them, paste component values. I'm gonna do the same now for the text. So for this text, for example, host. Um, where is my text color? Here it is. Put that in white. Copy this value. I'll change. I wanted to. Um, I kind of want to change the uh, the placeholder, but not not yet. So I'll just do normal text for now. And just paste this. Unfortunately, it also changed the text inside of it. So let me just redo that real quick, and then we'll have a decent piece of UI, and we should then be good to go. Yeah, as you can see here, the placeholder doesn't look too good, so I'm gonna have to change that to a grayish color, like that. That could do the job. Okay, and finally the spacer as well. There we go. And we've done it, so we should now be good to go. With all of these in mind, um, first we have one new button, so we'll have to include that. Let's put it in its own little section, so on host back button. Now we end up with all these pieces of UI. I'm gonna go ahead and take my camera and just put it somewhere else in the moment. Just, just put it anywhere else than where it is at the moment, so just maybe somewhere here. Let's hit play and have a look at what this does. We have our game, click on this. Yes, we have buttons, but we have nothing to help us um, go from one menu to the other which means now it's time to create the animator. So next step is gonna have to create the animator and we'll do that on top of our canvas right here. So prior to creating the animator, I'm going to create myself a new folder containing all of these. So create C sharp script, uh, I don't know, actually create folder and I'll call this animations. Now within here, what I'm gonna be doing is choosing my canvas and then opening up a window for animation. So animation control six. With this, we now have this new animation window, and I'm going to start by creating um, one that is called the... We're just going to call it the, the start menu, I believe. So, let's hit create. While we have the canvas selected, that's very important. And we are going to put everything within the animation in here. Now, they're looking to have an animation name. This is going to be the start menu animation. Okay. With the start menu, I don't actually want to do anything. I just want to keep this very specific state, I believe. So the state we are in when we start the game. So it looks something like that. Then I'm going to go ahead and create myself a new menu, a uh, new animation. That's going to be for the host menu. All right, so I put my window down here so we can see. I'm currently on the host menu animation, the one I just created, and I'm going to click record. While recording, I will take this game UI and I'll just move it on the right hand side or I'll manually write in here 2500 and minus 2500. So this way it just slides towards the right. Now I'm going to carefully pick the online menu. Actually, this is the host menu. Oh, I just realized. Okay, well, we're going to take the host menu and the host menu, I'm going to put that on zero, zero. So it goes from there to here and then on the top zero and the bottom zero as well. So it stands right here in the middle and that would be my host menu. Um, am I doing that right? Yes, okay, I'm doing that right, but it's gonna be a little bit confusing. Uh, my online menu, since I'm here, while I'm in the host menu, I'm gonna go under the online menu and move it to zero, zero as well, and then move it down to, I believe 1500 could do the job. So 1500 top, and minus 1500 here. So what's gonna happen is when I enter my host menu, uh, this menu is gonna go down and this one's gonna come down this way. 
we'll test that out in a bit. We'll just make we'll make sure it, it actually works fine. But um, that would be it for my host menu, I believe. Well, let's go ahead and create a new one. This one for the online menu. That's the one I should have done second. So sorry if that's a little bit confusing. Um, in that online menu, all I have to do is take my online menu, put it on top of my original menu and then take my original menu and move it towards the right hand side just like so okay so let's check this out right so we're on the start menu it looks like this we decide to go for online game it moves uh, for the online menu it moves the game UI towards this side and then it moves this one right so it just looks like it's slowed it, it slide towards this side and then what's going to happen is if I go from the online menu to the host menu. Hmm. So it's going to go in diagonal right now, which would mean we would have to go under the online menu and do one more change. So as I am on, under the online menu, as I am editing the online menu animation, I'm going to take my host and just put it in the above this, uh, this window here. Like so. And this should do the trick, okay? We're gonna make sure everything works once we start uh, playing the game. What I need to do to actually test this out is first uh, open up the animator. So I'm gonna go under my canvas, click on canvas, double click on it so it opens up the animator. And I'm gonna go and just take these three animations I've made, put them somewhere here at the top. The entry animation could be the start menu, that's totally fine. And then we're gonna have a way to branch out under any state. So take this, make transition, right click, make transition, like so. So for this animation state machine, I'm going to be using triggers. So let's go ahead, go under parameters, add a new trigger for every single one of these. So this one's going to be the start menu, host menu, and finally the online menu. Go under every single one of these arrows, add a new condition, that's the start menu, yep. That would be the host, and that would be the online. Good. So we should pretty much have everything we need to start scripting this out. What we're going to do next is open up our game UI script and create ourselves a reference towards that animator. So I'll go somewhere around here, do a serialized field with a private animator and I'll call it the menu animator. Now what's gonna happen when I press on local game button I don't actually want anything to change. Oh I that just made me realize I have to wipe the whole menu when uh, when we start the game so since we're right here let's go back and do one real quick one more animation and it's just gonna be an animation in which you don't see any of those pieces of UI so for example uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. It should be right around there, I believe. So here's what we're going to do. Create a new animation, create new clip, and call it in-game <laughs> menu. Why not? Because we're going to have some, some piece of UI in there eventually. Put that under the animation folder. Hit save. And here's what we need to do. So I believe we'll have to take this piece of chess here. Um, the piece of game UI will have to put it down, so 1500, minus 1500, and what else? I believe that's it. So if it doesn't look good, we're going to make sure to change that eventually. Okay. Good. So next step, go back on the animator, create another piece, another trigger for this one. So in game menu. Create a new state, add the trigger, and now we should be good to go for real this time. So I'll be opening up my script, and when I do on local game, I'll do menu animator, set trigger to in game menu. Good. When I press on online game, I want to go see the online menu. So online menu. When I do on online host button, I want to see the host button, the host menu actually. And when I do connect, I 
want to be able to just wait a little bit. So this one would require additional logic. So let me just put it here temporarily. When I press on back button from the online menu, I want to go back to the regular menu. So that's the start. And when I go from host to uh, when I press on back from hosting, I want to go back to the online menu. Okay, all a bit complex, but this is our navigation and it should work the way uh, the way described. One thing that we might have forgotten to do is hook up our button. So I'm going to double check that real quick. Yeah, so this one doesn't have anything. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go under his button. That's for the back button of the online menu. Let me drag and drop the canvas. That's on online back button, I believe. So on online back. Yep, here it is. Let me hook up the connect button this time. On online connect button. We have the host over here. On online host. And at the top over here, we have the on host back button. All right, let's cross our finger and hope that everything works on the first try and that it looks good too. So if I press on online game, oh, on assigned reference, we're off a good start. <laughs> let's go on our canvas and make sure we drag and drop our animator, which is just right here. How convenient. online game it goes towards the left back goes towards here back here okay so we have this flow going well now hosting it goes up we go back it goes here back host good seems to work well yep so everything seems to go to to go pretty well here so we have our flow animation flow as well and our flow of menu you can see it has four different screen here where this is host this is connect this is uh start and this would be the game UI. Now I initially thought that I would be um, doing this in the same video so starting to create the client and the server but what I realized is that it's gonna be much easier if we actually start that in the next video and we start off a clean slate. So we've done we've done the UI that we needed to do for, for all of the flow to work in the next episode of course we're gonna be starting to create the client and then the server script and uh, maybe also a message that we pass in between the server and client just to keep the connection alive. So that's what we're going to be doing in the next episode. But for now, I think we're off a very good start and our UI looks clean. I didn't say it looks good, but it looks clean. And of course, if it's something that you need to change, if you don't want to have a, a static instance, uh, for example, because your own game UI also is called game UI and it, it has a static instance, um, then if, you, you can actually hook that up on your own UI, right? You don't need to do exactly what I've done here, but uh, this is the minimal the minimal that you need to make this work. So that being said, I will see you in the next episode. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be great. Cheers.